So this is in response to a viewer's question. It wants to know what about Harry after the coronation of his dad? Okay, so if you like the video, I hope you do like it. And if you um, haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I just want to say, listen, this is not my question. And I understand people being hesitant to talk about what's going to happen after the Queen passes on and uh, Charles uh, takes the throne. But people want to know, and so I'm going to answer that question. And I guess the other thing I want to mention is that, you know, so many times we are uh, afraid or scared. I don't know. We don't want to think about uh, our own mortality and certainly not the mortality of the people that we love. But we have to. We should. This is inevitable. These things are going to happen. And the monarchy has certainly planned for it. And uh, all the people in those positions uh, have an idea of how they're going to respond, what's going to happen. Uh, no matter how much you love somebody, we're not all going to be here forever. And there's going to be a time when we have to face it. And it's much better if we make plans for, uh, for the people that we love and that we care about, how that's going to happen. And it doesn't even hurt for you to kind of think about the loved ones in your life how you're going to react when the inevitable does become so that's what I have to say about that so let's see what the cards have to say about Harry uh, after the coronation okay so these are again some amazing cards the touchstone tarot by Cat Black who's an Australian artist she lives in on the western uh, southwestern I think part of Australia but the box is so great you really feel like you got something worthwhile in that the instruction booklet is um, is very good, as a matter of fact. It's not in color, but it's got some really good uh, ideas for divination. Tells you a little bit about the artist, so that's handy. And then the cards. I mean, look how beautiful they are. Even just the back is gilding. You can feel that gilding right there. But the front, these cards are not hard to decipher, but they really focus in on the face. Of You'll notice all of these are, you know, from the bust up from the waist almost up so they really make you identify with the face when you're trying to make the interpretation cat black is amazing um i don't know how uh, she came up with this but she gave me some beautiful beautiful artwork and all digital so there's not a painting somewhere that looks like this of course these are made from actual uh, paintings and you know i i do this so that everybody can look at these cards and maybe you don't get to see uh, kind of different kind of cards and, um, and this gives you that opportunity. I always wanted to see what the tarot readers were using, what the cards looked like when I was uh, only just uh, being a viewer. Okay, so Harry after his father's coronation. Harry after his father's coronation. You know, one thing that we should remember, because uh, we haven't been through it uh, since uh, this queen has been on the crown through so many of our complete lives, um, is that, uh, for instance, when she came to the, th to the throne, uh, the coronation didn't happen for, you know, you know, a considerable amount of time after, um, of course, her father's death and interment, and uh, but she was queen. But uh, the official coronation was waited a respectable length of time. I don't remember how long it was. I want to say 18 months, but I'm not 100% sure at all. Not even sure at all. But so that's likely uh, what's going to follow uh, this time around too. There will be a a, a respectable period of time, but. Uh, we have to remember that this is the monarchy. This is about the continuation of something that the queen herself felt very strongly about and would have uh, wanted to um, to be celebrated by the entire you know country, of course, by the entire the entire realm. Now, for Harry, um, after his father is uh, has his coronation, so. I guess we want to know, the, the question wasn't very specific, it was just, what about, how about Harry after the coronation? Didn't want to know if he's going to be let back into the uh, 
you know, the monarchy, which I don't know that he's even seeking that. Um, but maybe, I mean, if we think about how that happened, what we know, because we don't know the details. We think we do, but we don't. We know what whatever uh, particular information source we each individually tend to uh, depend on has told us. But it seems to me that he was perhaps expecting not to be completely out of the picture and um, and when that was what happened I think that might have taken his breath a little bit but uh, being uh, a Windsor uh, he was uh, you know determined to uh, move forward with plans for his family and not it seems to me letting happen to his wife what he feels may happen to his mother and let's face it he learned what happens to his mother actually many many years after he had already formed an opinion about losing his mother as a child you know then you don't start to get the real facts until much later and now in this amazing uh, information age that we're in who knows how he came to his um truth about uh, what his mother's uh, situation was like so harry after the coronation of his father harry after the coronation of his father i really don't have a question to ask because it was the, the, the viewer didn't ask but um so we'll just see what the cards are willing to let us know. Full Celtic Cross, Harry, after the coronation of his dad. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Harry, after the coronation of his father. Okay, let's see what sort of um, information we get. Harry, after the coronation of his father. The signifier card for that is the Five of Swords. Ah, this is interesting. You know, the Five of Swords is a betrayal. It's a theft. It's thought of as an abuse of power. And the question is Harry, specifically Harry, after the coronation of his father. So this signifier, uh, the Five of Swords, the Five of Swords are, tr for me, uh, like I so often, you always hear me say, are truth, justice, rules, law. Um, and uh, and this uh, card happens to depict a rebirth right here with this little uh, butterfly on the scene here. We have someone here who is really grieving. We have someone here who is carrying on, actually. And, uh, you know, this just looks like Harry to me, feeling a bit, um, a bit unfairly abused, perhaps. I don't know. That's this fellow looks sad. Okay, he's got some truths. He has his own truths, his own justice, and his own law uh, on his side here. And there's a couple of things that are still uh, within reach, to tell you the truth. And uh, so this is a this card is packed with uh, information for this question, Harry after the coronation. So yeah, rebirth, someone grieving, someone carrying on, and this person really looking. If you look at their face, really looking, not satisfied, and unhappy actually the uh, challenge to that card that five of swords then is the ten of wands okay so the ten of wands is this woman very gracefully picking up a bundle of actions of plans uh, of forward movement of motions uh, which is what wands represent this is challenged by someone gracefully picking that up okay and and embracing it to carry it on a bit okay so that makes sense uh, I always feel like we shouldn't get too hung up on the sex of the people in these cards um, when we're when we're dividing them uh, so this could be Charles uh, this could be just the a representative of the monarchy okay carrying on with the plans as it must and and um, Harry from my 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 not intuitive self just kind of says to me that it looks like he's he feels things very personally very deeply uh, and this could feel like a, an abuse to him perhaps I don't know although he's uh, well let's just keep on going the base of this of the reading then for Harry after the coronation this is the Emperor the Emperor is the base of all of this the the continuation of the monarchy you know I don't really see this as Charles I see this as the as the the monarchy itself so the basis of all this is that uh, tradition um, and all of its value and all of its worth and the Emperor has all the value and all the worth uh, what the Emperor uh, uh, expresses is what's going to happen in his realm the monarchy not Charles in the past of this reading is the Knight of Coins. Okay, so this Knight, to me, you know, right off the bat, I feel like this is William. But this Knight of Coins is, uh, is uh, the Knight is the person in the royal uh, um, 
uh, suite that's uh, when he's given a charge this value he's going to make it happen that's his job when you tell the knight take this and do this then the knight has to say yes my liege and go forward and do it and so this for me could be William, I almost want to say Harry, but I, I feel more strongly pulled towards William. Someone really taking uh, the value that they've been given and moving forward with it. The sky in this reading, which is sometimes you know the most you want to hope for, is again these wands, is these forward movement, these plans, these actions, and the Queen of Wands. Okay, and we see this queen is very comfortably seated. She has her intuition in her lap. She has this um, lovely view. Of, of the of the realm outside of her window, but she's not paying attention to that. She's looking at us. She's looking at us squarely in the face to let us know. Listen, I'm very comfortably um, uh, satisfied with with what I have in my lap and in my arms right now. So that's that card. The uh, final outcome for the first part of this full Celtic cross for Harry after the coronation. Harry after the coronation. The star. Interesting. So the star is really, you know, um, completely uh, privileged, completely adored. Uh, all of these, this water that we see uh, pouring out every time we see the star is indicative of all those emotions, of all that passion that goes with the, the significance of being the star. And uh, this is Harry. For me, this is clearly, this is Harry. Okay. Now for the last four, four cards of this, Harry, after his father's coronation, what is the self of that question? What about Harry after the coronation ace of coins so interesting I'm not sure how this plays into it so if I just look at what's represented in the cards we have this angel right here who's beckoning up to this worth that's hanging up in the sky and we have this the, this faithful companion uh, just seated right by the side so all of this that's happening is predetermined, okay? This um, this uh, continuation of the monarchy is something that, you know, was always going to happen. That value was has always been right there up in the sky for the next person to pluck it out and continue on with it. That's the self of this question. Harry, after the coronation, and hopefully he sees that as part of all of this, this, this inevitability. The... Uh, the... Um, environment that that's in then that this continuation almost this big offer of value that has to be taken up is um is this four of wands and you know the four of wands for me are small celebrations i always say that wands like i said before are actions motion forward planning and um and so again we kind of have a repeat of this uh uh this situation here with this intuition this comfort um uh, and knowing that this will be um you know in such an important way a small celebration now this coronation I don't know it could turn out to be an enormous affair but in the grand scheme of things it's a small t celebration towards the uh, continuance of that uh, of that tradition of that monarchy in the um, hopes and the fears for Harry after the coronation we have this ace of swords and so this angel is offering up and look at this some more rebirth here some uh, and strength clearly at the side of this angel has a hand, a, a hand on her strength and this uh, truth justice rules law is just being uh, shown to us even crowned right here so the hopes and the fears for this is that uh, this inevitability is uh, is understood the strength of it the uh, inevitability of the rebirth and the power of the of the uh, the law of the um, tradition that has to go forward and then in the uh, the likely outcome of this whole thing then with this king of coins is um you know the king is absolutely the ruler and the coins coins for me don't represent money very often they usually represent the deep-seated tradition or value in a thing or a person that has to go forward on the table in front of this king we see that this uh this um urn has been uh, tippled over and uh, it looks as if it might even be empty at this point so the compassion has been drained all right and um, and this king's already partaken of the meal, and so he's nourished, he's ready. Um, compassion has been set aside, and he's ready to move forward with his value. And I guess that has to be Charles. I mean, I'm not sure, but just to recap it quickly to see if this makes sense, if I tell it again, is uh, Harry after the coronation, and so we have him feeling betrayed. Okay, in this um, with his truth, justice, rules, law, right here. Others have carried on. It's understood the rebirth, but uh, it's grieved appropriately. But uh, that could be a feeling there the uh, challenge to that then with this ten of wands is is this tradition gracefully moving 
forward with all of its responsibilities, all of its plans, okay? In the base of this reading, with this emperor as this solid base of everything, that's the monarchy, okay? This is what is the inevitability of going forward. This is bigger than any person. This is bigger than the queen's uh, father when he was there. This is bigger than the queen. This is bigger than Charles. This is the movement of that tradition. And in the past of this reading with this nine of coins, look, this for me is is William. Uh, just understanding his value and understanding that he has to be the knight uh, in charge of what is coming his way so far. And up in the uh, sky of this reading, we have this queen of wands. Again, she's in complete control of her, her plans and and, uh, with her intuition and her foresight so she's right up here in the sky uh, understanding uh, what we're looking at here what she's looking at as a matter of fact and remember don't get too caught up in the sex of these cards as far as they relate to the people we're talking about but the likely outcome of the whole thing is the star and in this case I really feel like this star has to do with Harry I really do feel like this has to do with him uh, coming into his uh, his uh, light uh, as it were so, but then the self of the question is Harry after the coronation. And we have this angel, this angelic offering of a lot of value here, okay? And a lot of, um, what, what is a pet? A pet is so uh, blindly uh, 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 obedient to us. So, hopefully this angel brings that to Harry. But it's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of what? This smaller celebration. Even if it's a huge coronation, it's just a small uh, drop in the water towards the celebration of the tradition of that uh, of that monarchy okay and then the um, uh, hopes and the fears of all this with this ace of swords is the strength the rebirth the truth the law the justice crowned and brought to everyone uh, in that uh, situation and then up here with this king of coins this has to be Charles just understanding he's nourished he's replenished he has his value and he's ready to face us and move everything in the direction uh, that um, that is inevitable that's what I get Well, I don't know if that answers the question. That's just what the cards have said. So uh, I try to just be true to what comes out and gets laid down on the table. And I hope you feel that uh, through the lens. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.